That is an impressive amount of cake. Just my daily cake allotment, darling. You keep cake in your purse? Hmm. Where else would one keep one's cake? The kitchen? <laughs> Don't be ridiculous, darling. The children are in the kitchen literally all the time. True. Mm, darling, you must taste this. Try some. Ah, uh, no, thank you. Here, here. No, I'm good. Try some, darling. It's delicious. I said I'm good. Okay, <laughs> I've got my carrots here. Plus, all the water I want. Okay. All right, darling. There's no need to be insensitive. I agree. Mm, darling, what is that? What are you doing there with the typey typey? Oh, I'm tracking my points. Oh, darling, please don't tell me you're running an underground gambling ring because they never work out for the best. Mm -mm. An underground ga- No, no, I'm tracking or keeping track of what I'm eating. Mmm, I've lost five pounds, see? I got this keychain. It's beautiful, darling. It's symbolic. Ah, mm -hmm. It's a good start. I'm feeling good about it. Bravo, darling. You know, I did feel a bit spryer last week when I was at my rock climbing competition. You do rock climbing? Oh, yes, darling. You never know when you may need to scale the side of a mountain. Hmm. It's definitely gotten me out of a few sticky situations. Well, speaking of sticky, I think I'm going to go. It's not exactly fun for me to be around all this cake. Mm. Smart thinking, darling. Ooh, maybe a trip to the gym. A trip to the gym? Yes, got to get that metabolism firing away. Right, right. Well, thank you. Thank you for that suggestion. Hi everyone, I'm Andy. Welcome to Furniture Fables. Ah, cravings. Even we furniture redesigners can fall under their powerful spell. And in a furniture world filled with subtle neutrals and strong statement pieces, we may suddenly find ourselves longing for something, well, undeniably, unapologetically sweet. Ah, uh, late night furniture hunting. Just like online shopping or a midnight visit to the kitchen, it can get you into trouble. I already had plenty of pieces to work on, but when I saw this intriguing little four drawer chest listed for $20, I just had to indulge myself. The truth was I had never seen something quite like it. It was in modestly rough shape with the typical scratches and dings and a generally failing finish. And its top had definitely seen better days with what looked like some water damage. The bottoms of the side veneers were chipped, a very common issue. But what had stopped my marketplace scrolling in its tracks was this scalloped top drawer with a bowed overhang and its mirrored veneer, as well as the very interesting trim piece that appeared to be a carved floral pattern. I found a maker's label and saw that this was by the company Chancellor, 1960. Thankfully, all four drawers worked just great and were sitting straight. And so with those very sweet details in mind, I began. I started by getting out some Simple Green, which is just a very basic cleanser that acts as a degreaser. And I gave the chest of drawers a good spray all over. And then using a bucket of hot water and just a basic sponge, I gave the chest a good scrubbing. Here 
here you can see some of that finish is coming right off just with the cleansing. I gave the piece a good rinse and then I let it dry and then I came back and I removed all of the drawers making sure to number them so I would know where they wanted to go back home to. Then I started the usually pretty straightforward job of removing the hardware. Unfortunately, this piece was a little trickier. I had to go and remove those screw covers you can see there. And you can also see the actual pulls had these kind of notched endings that caused some veneer damage as they unscrewed. Hmm, okay, add that to the list of things to fix. So I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to finish this piece in terms of the painted to unpainted ratio, which for me meant that I was probably going to need to do some exploratory sanding. I got out some foam abrasives in different grits and my mask went, oops. Ah, it appears I have a little friend. <laughs> Hello. Um, I rehomed my friend to the bushes. Always check your masks, friends. <laughs> and then I began sanding with a medium grit pad. I quickly saw that this very deep grain was not going to let go easily, so I switched to a coarse pad for the top. I got about halfway done sanding the top when I just couldn't stand it anymore. I had to start sanding that floral trim piece. Honestly, I thought there was a chance it would turn out to be some kind of resin or plastic, but it wasn't, it was solid wood. And so with my medium foam pad, I was able to remove a majority of that dark old stain. Just to get things moving along, I used my old orbital sander to scuff up the sides of the dresser and then went back to working on the top. Continuing on my exploratory sanding quest, I began removing the old stain from that top drawer. I was careful to keep my sander moving in the direction of those diagonal veneers and to watch out for those little chipped areas so I didn't snag them. Okay, back to the top again. Here you can really see how deep this grain is. Wow. What you may also be able to see is that I had uncovered some black water stains. So black water spots or stains will generally not sand out, unfortunately. Instead, you need to use some type of wood bleach. Typically, people use oxalic acid to bleach out those stains. I mixed up a solution according to the directions, and then I applied a spot treatment to that big ring, and I scrubbed it with a scrub brush. Now, not according to the directions, I then made a concentrated paste, and I applied that too and scrubbed it in. And then I applied the solution all over the entire top in hopes that the color of that wood on the top would be fairly consistent. While that was drying in the sun, I gave these very shiny drawers a good scuff sand. And then I did a second layer of the solution all over the top of the dresser.
and then I rinsed the top really well three separate times with clear water. Okay, time to fix our drawer damage. I lined up all of the drawers so that I could get to them easily and quickly. And then I mixed up some Bondo, which is a very tough, very strong two-part epoxy wood filler. Once it was mixed, I worked quickly. The open time is really just a few minutes and when it's warm and dry, it's even faster. So I applied it to all of the little chipped areas on all of the drawers making sure to completely fill in those chips, as well as leave a little bit of overfill so that I could sand the spots back smooth. You can see how the Bondo was starting to set up by the time I got to that last drawer, but I just made it. Phew. Okay, the final little bit of sanding of that floral carved trim I just did by hand, trying to get out all of the little traces of that dark stain. And then I hit the top back edge of the piece with my sander, and then I began sanding down all of my filled repairs. It was just about this time that John said to me, there seems to be an abundance of sanding with this project. Yes, I said, you are correct, sir. <laughs> You are correct about that. Lots of sanding on this one. Okay, my top still had some stubborn black marks and so I decided to give it one more try. I did a one more concentrated treatment of the oxalic acid with a scrubbing and then I rinsed it again. Once that had all dried, I taped up my strip of carved flowers and then I wiped back any dust with a microfiber towel and then I got out my primer. I am using this shellac based primer, a trimmed up chip brush, a mini roller and a completely spider free mask. Once I had completed that coat of primer, I removed my tape and then I sat back to just look at the piece. Design can be so much about balance, you see. Oh man, this chair is comfortable. <laughs> okay, after staring at it for a good long time, I finally had my vision and my plan. <laughs> And so I retaped my flowers. Then I got out my paint. This lovely soft pink is Peony by Fusion Mineral Paint. I am adding about a tablespoon of their extender to the paint, which will slow its drying time, which will be a huge help for me in this very warm, very dry weather. And I think I'll use their Stahlmeister brush again.
for that top edge, I found that my angled square brush by Zebra worked really great. Okay, so back to the top again. You can see that after all of that work, those black spots are still visible. Ugh, sometimes it's like this. Now, there may be other products to try, or I could have done an all over paint wash to try and camouflage the stains, but I decided instead to give this large stencil a try. I love this pattern, and I think it looks amazing on the tops of pieces, but I wasn't sure if it hit the right note for this little chest, stylistically. While I thought about that whole situation, I decided to do something a little special for the bottom of my scalloped drawer. I had decided that I wanted to leave the carved floral trim piece in some kind of wood finish. And so I knew I wanted a contrast between it and the bottom of the drawer so that both could stand out. I taped off the bottom inch or so of the drawer and then I added another piece of tape that had some overhang. And then I began trimming the tape all along the edge of that scallop, using it as a guide basically. I decided midway that probably a knife would cut it a little more cleanly and then I peeled it off and cleaned up any little stray bits with my scissors. And then I applied it to the drawer so that I could have a painted trim line that followed the curve of the drawer bottom. All in all, I did four coats along that bottom trim. I also took this moment to make sure all the drawer sides were cleanly painted, but that the dovetail joinery was still visible. Okay, you see this lovely black line back here? I am not a fan. This kind of negative space makes your piece look more rickety to me, like it's literally coming apart at the seams. And so I did a line of paintable caulk, smoothing it out with my fingers and a damp cloth and then I checked the entire piece for any other spots that needed those tiny little fills. These little details make a big difference in how your piece looks. Our eyes detect them so easily. It's amazing what our eyes catch. And when these little cracks are filled, the piece just looks more solid. It looks more stable and healthy. Okay, time to remove my tape. Ooh, okay, this is kind of fun. Pretty cool, but not done. I went ahead and I painted up the bottom edge of the dresser, as well as bringing the paint inside the sides of the body so that Anything visible when those drawers were closed would look nice and finished. And I also hit those side bottoms as well, which will help seal up those old veneers. By this time I had done three coats and I just continued on and did a fourth coat all over the entire body and the drawers. A light pink like this one will need those extra coats. So for my very special top drawer, I decided this little stencil seemed just right. So I centered it up and then using a semi-dry brush technique, I began stippling it on. I found that my smaller square brush was actually better 
for the large one in doing this stencil, so I switched over to that brush to complete it. So you might have realized we have a bit of a stenciling situation, don't we? <laughs> the thing was that top stencil, while very pretty, just didn't work stylistically with the other details of this piece, in my opinion. But even more importantly, I could still see the black stain coming through. If you are digging that top stencil or hoping for a wood toned top, I am so sorry. <laughs> Look away. <laughs> but it was time to cut my losses and prime the top. Ugh. After all that work, all the sanding, all the wood bleach, the stenciling, you know, sometimes it just doesn't break your way. So here is a cool trick to use when you find yourself working with a lighter, soft color, such as this pink. I mixed up a wash of half water and half paint, and then I applied this pink wash all over my drawer front. I tried my best to really go with the grain of those veneers and I just used a little extra water here and there if I needed to loosen up any spots. You can make a paint wash with any color and the cool thing about using the same color as I'm using over the entire rest of the piece is that we're creating this very tonal look, which is a little bit more modern and it kind of tempers the sweetness of the pink. I gave my carved bar a quick spray of water to remove any dust. And then while it was still damp, I applied that same pink wash and then wiped it back. Remember our cute hardware with the flowers and the crowns? Time to clean these babies up. I got out some Barkeeper's Friend and I let them sit with some of that for a minute and then I scrubbed and rinsed them. And it took a couple of applications to get them looking like this. Then I needed to catch my top up to the rest of the dresser, so I sanded that primer and I began applying peony to the top. On my second coat, you can see that I went in the opposite direction as my first coat, going opposite of the grain. Then I painted that top edge of my special drawer, as well as finishing off its sides. And then I did my final coat for the top. I put all of the hardware back and then I used some more peony in that 50-50 wash strength and I applied it to the poles. And then I wiped back that paint so that we got sort of a relief effect. This little sweetheart definitely needs some pretty for her drawers, so I decided to add this gorgeous soft print. I'm getting so professional with my wallpaper applications. I'm actually using the wallpaper smoother. I don't even know what it's called. It's, the, it's a smoother, right? <laughs> it actually helped quite a bit. <laughs> Go figure, right? Oh, I love that paper. And then as Vinny the dog kept careful watch for anyone who may dare approach the fabling factory, I painted up the bottom of that scallop drawer. 
After giving our stencil and the bottom edge a fine sanding, I used a basic white wax to seal the drawer front. Then I used a little furniture salve in this very fresh lemon verbena scent to condition those old drawer sides, as well as the bottoms of the drawers and the slides on the inside of the dresser. My final steps, I just added a little bit of white wax to seal up that carved trim and I added just a little touch of gilding wax to my pulls that needed a tiny bit more shimmer. Okay, do you remember our tempting treat with its tragic top, dingy and dark details, and its extra special layer that was lost in the middle? Well, here she is now. Like strawberry mousse. No, no, like, like one of those cakes with thick frosting and flowers and sprinkles and, ugh, sorry. <laughs> Whether a sweet addition for a baby or child's room, or for someone a little older with somewhere special to go, or even lending an extra hand to serve some special treats. Our little chest seems to me to have found her true calling. Frosted from head to toe in peony pink and sprinkled with extra special natural wood accents, she seems to have hit upon that elusive note, a tonal flavor of pink. Freshly modern and yet still delectably sweet. So what did our sweet treat cost me to whip up? Well, I used about two thirds of my jar of peony. So I think it's fair to go ahead and put the whole cost of that jar of paint in at $27. My little stencil was $5. I used about another $20 in primer, wood filler, sanding pads, wood bleach, painter's tape, and wax. And so that puts my total for this recipe at $52. So what will I list it for? Well, unfortunately, I did lose a lot of time trying to save that top veneer. But if I pull that out of my build time and I add in my out-of-pocket costs, I believe a list price of $450 feels palatable. So what did you think? Do you agree with me about this little chest's calling? Did you see pink? And which are you, a salty snack person or a sweet treat person? I can go either way, but ultimately, I'll take that chocolate cake, please. Is it still here? Chocolate cake? Did that get eaten? Yeah. I hope you enjoyed this sweet fable. If so, please give me a thumbs up. It is amazing how much that helps my channel. And hey, for the cherry on top of the sundae, go ahead and hit that subscribe button too. That way you won't miss any future delicacies. Thank you so much for joining me, my friends. I will see you next time for more furniture fables.